And this brings us to the community. Yes. Where is the people? Where is all of our people? Well, yeah, half, half of the community is probably here now <laughs> and presenting this tutorial. Um, well, the thing is that, as you may have noticed, OMR involves several disciplines because although the results and the domain it's mostly related to music, and so there are people from Music Information Retrieval and Digital Libraries, these are the people that are interested in the results of OMR, but the input of an OMR system is an image which means that the methodological part of dealing with it comes from machine learning, pattern recognition, image processing, computer vision, which are, uh, well, different worlds. So, OMR is in the middle of all of them, which may look like a good thing, but uh, sometimes um, people in OMR rarely meet in person because they are all going to their own communities, so we haven't found an, an appropriate community around OMR. So here I'm listing some of the most important venues for OMR. If you are willing to, if we have convinced you that OMR is what you want to do next year, uh, here I'm listing some of the venues that you may be interested in. So just there's something to, to be uh, aware of. Uh, the problem, as I said, is that there has been a, a stable, the, there has been a lack of a stable community. Uh, publications are rather scattered across all these communities. I have plot here uh, where all my publications have been um, accepted in these fields. The blue line is the music information retrieval, uh, mostly Izmir, in which we are getting a maximum this year with seven papers, including. Izmir and the DLFM, which is a workshop that is going to be uh, held after Izmir, and the document analysis system is losing the, um, the interest in OMR, unfortunately. But taking this as an opportunity, we have recently organized the first international workshop on reading music systems, Worms. No, where is the Oh, come on, isn't it? Sorry. Oh, I just <laughs> spoiled you. Yes. We organized worms. We were giving this out. This is here for you if you want. We, well, Alex asked the company to sponsor, uh, to get a sponsor, but yeah, they refused. Uh, given the success of worms, we'll probably get another opportunity next year. <laughs> well, no, it's, uh, it was a big surprise for us. We have around 30 attendees. Our main, uh, our threshold in order to uh, not be embarrassed is that we have more attendees than organizers. <laughs> Which, yeah, unfortunately not. And we have 12 papers covering most of the aspects related to OMR. We have, we have, we have not only um, technical solutions, but also people uh, speaking about this community, people speaking about uh, user perspectives, we have mostly librarians and of course we also had technical solution papers but it was, I think, was a great success and it took place the very first year of this year, which was three days ago and given that we had this, I mean, it was a success we plan to have a follow-up event which will be mostly uh, located, well, likely be located with next Xmere if uh, we find a room. <coughs> yes? We, we so. can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> you heard? She said. Yeah. So, okay. If you want to keep, I think this is a good opportunity to gather the community, as I said before. In this event was the, the, the day in which more OMR people was in the same place. Were in the same place. Can you confirm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 12 people speaking about OMR was you know, a milestone in this field. Good. Well, unfortunately, we are <laughs> reaching the end of both the tutorial, but also we are close to solve OMR. So <laughs> if you want to contribute, I'm going to give you some 
nice ideas for future work or for future discussion. Uh, we have seen today that current state is mostly based, I mean the technical part of OMR is mostly based on machine learning, which I think it's great because we can import the, the advances in, all the, in machine learning communities to OMR. And OMR, because of this reason, because the models are based on machine learning, which you can modify the training data, you can use it again in a different domain. OMR is becoming more and more useful for practical, for practical purposes. We'll have two papers in the DLFM talking about this, by Jan and by David Risa, because, yeah, generic machine learning makes these methods to be transferred more easily to new use cases. The community is growing, uh, we just have mentioned, there are public data sets, code repositories, and we have forms. You know? And we especially think that it's a good time to dive into OMR. So, but do it quickly. You're interested because as I said, this, yeah, probably two, three years, I don't know. <laughs> OMR was waiting for us to, <laughs> to be done. <laughs> if, if you, if you, I mean, if you start working on Mario, you'll hear this very often, like, come on, Omar, that's, that's pretty easy. Or, but sometimes you, you, you heard that, huh? You don't see the problems until Yeah, you exactly, know. until they go. And then you never hear again about that. <laughs> he, he or she disappeared. <laughs> yeah, that was the joke I spoiled before. <laughs> Worms. Okay, well, um, here, very briefly, I'm going to mention some of the things that we think that would be interesting to have in future OMR. One of the things that we are now mostly using machine learning models that have been proposed for a different thing, and we are importing it for us with OMR. But we think it could be interesting to find some machine learning models that have been specially designed for OMR, which may want to improve the state of the art in that way. Also, now we are using uh, machine learning, we can reuse our approach for different manuscripts, different domains, but we still need grams of data. So although we are solving some part of the reuse of OMR, we still need to annotate new label data every time we need to apply our, our machine learning model. So one promising avenue for OMR is to study how we can transfer the knowledge acquired from a specific data set, a specific manuscript type, to different types without, without spending the effort of, of creating new ground truth. Also, we have seen that uh, we are now able to deal with syntactic issues like relating no heads with stems, with beams, and so on, but we still are lacking of using semantic modeling, which means, what, for example, what is the most likely node after a sequence of previous nodes that may help OMR to lead the recognition toward the, the musical sequence which makes more sense in, in, in the semantic sense. And we, of course, we hope that people will start integrating OMR into musicological workflows. Okay? Um, here we are releasing, I guess we are making this available, the, the I mean, we're making available the, the Google Slides. Uh, so we have put here all the references that we have been using in the presentation. You can take a look. Of course, I'm not going through them now, but they will be available for you.